Good afternoon, Atlanta. Welcome to WCEG Network, the WCEG Talk Radio, uh, the Worldwide Community Empowerment Group. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. This is Veteran Today. Uh, call in and join the conversation at 678-619-1402. And I am Herman Anderson, and one I'm, of the co-hosts. And I'm Anthony C. Aiken. And unfortunately, one of the Amigos is not with us today, Herman. That's Gustavo. Gustavo, get better, man. Yeah, he's a little under the weather. So we, uh, well, there's two of us today and, uh, one of a special person, Reverend McGee, may call in. Uh, but in the meantime, we go to uh, get rolling. And as I say, we are veterans today. And there's a lot going on uh, that is affecting veterans uh, in politically. So uh, one thing that happened this week is uh, the State of the Union address is next week. Tuesday night. In Georgia's own Stacy. Abrams will be the, Abrams, yes. Abrams will be doing the rebuttal to the president. So uh, that's an issue that uh, is on the table. So you call us at six seven eight six one nine one four zero two. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and let you know. Let us know what you think about it. Yeah, not only that, I, mean, I think it's not only that. I think it's very significant that. Um, with the uh, closure that lasted 35 days, was it? Yes. And how it affected uh, so many workers, uh, over 800,000. It may have been more, but we want to say uh, we're glad that you're back to work, and then we know that there are a lot of veterans working for the federal government. So we, we're very, very pleased that you're back. Now we understand about the 15th of February is another cutoff date that we need to be concerned with uh, in regards to uh, the government. Uh, either closing again or remaining open. But I can tell you, we're just so proud the fact that you're back and families are being taken care of. That is correct. And uh, we hope that you, we hope that you made whole with back pay and all of that. So uh, keep that in mind. And as we uh, move forward, we'll talk about some other uh, current issues in uh one issue that we talked about last week, and I'm going to add another one to it, is our representative, Mike Glenn, in the House of Representatives. He's also a veteran, so he keeps us uh, updated on what's going on uh, during the legislation section, session at Georgia, in, uh, for, for the state of Georgia. Uh, last week, we mentioned that he co-sponsored legislation to eliminate state income taxes for um, on military benefits. That's very important. And uh, this week I received notification representing Mike Glenn, named Vice Chair of House Appropriation Subcommittee on Education. State represent representative Mike Glenn, Democrat at Jonesboro, was recently named Vice Chair of the House of Appropriation Subcommittee on Education by High Speaker David Ralston. Representing Glenn will serve as a member of the Defense and Veteran Affairs, Education and Public Safety, Homeland Security Committees. So he's definitely representing veterans. Well, you know what? Uh, talking about the state tax being um, adjudicated, uh, taken away, Georgia would then get in line with other states that have already been doing that for years. And I know in, in state of Florida and state of Texas, uh, those things are occurring. It's a way to say thank you for the services that you've rendered to our, con our country, um, all gave some, some gave all. So whatever we can do to assist uh, veterans and their families, uh, it's, it's, it's tremendous. So uh, personally, and I, I know you concur with me, uh, Herman, that we applaud uh, the state senator for his initiative in coming up with this, this bill. And hopefully within the next 40 days, that particular bill will be signed and approved and as we say, a done deal. Done deal, and veterans can start filing for tax refund. Yeah, tax refund. <laughs> that you know it was less than eighty days now before the fifteenth uh, of April, right? Right. Less, less than eighty days. So there are people scrambling now, and to get those things done again, they're scrambling. Why? Because of the fifteenth of February. You know, the fifteenth of February being the key 
date that the government possibly could close down again. So do what you got to do. Get your taxes done. Get all your files uh, together and, and go to your particular agency or CPA or someone that helps you file your uh, your uh, IRS taxes by the uh, 15th of April. Okay. You know, one other thing that uh, we talked about uh, this coming up, uh, tom tomorrow being the 1st of February. So Actually today. That's, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm a day off. Okay. Today being the 1st of February. So one is Black History Month. So we definitely want to key in on those male and females um, uh, that served with integrity, honor, and, and dedication uh, in the defense of our nation. So we'll be having some good call-in and in-studio guests to highlight uh, those particular individuals that served our nation. Well, that is correct, and I I received information already from from Dr. Candy Tate, who is an Emory professor, with some good information, and we will ha have people like her participate during this month. Yeah, Dr. Tate's been a guest on our show on several occasions, so we welcome her back with to come back and bring the good news to us about veterans and things that are going on. I can tell you that there's one initiative that I've been fortunate enough to work with her on, and it's dealing with an initiative with veterans out at the old Fort McPherson. So she'll be able to give us an update on that. But there are a lot of other things going on, and one that we mentioned last week, Herman, that I think needs to be mentioned again, it's uh, the VA begins a new claims appeal process which goes into effect on the 19th of February. That is huge. Yeah, and this new system is known as the Rapid Appeals Modernization Program, RAMP, which is touted by the VA, touted by the VA, as a major improvement in the, in the uh, claims appeals process. What do you right. think about that, Herman? Uh, well, as you say, I, I hope it is, as they say, all it is 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 advertised to be, and yeah. we, you know, we've had some discussion with us, a uh, couple of experts, uh, Dottie Pridmo and Reverend McGee, yeah. and it's it's basically the, my what what I got from them is it's it's still under the microscope. Yeah, it is, and th this particular ramp program is meant to fix the dismal display. Let me get that. That word out there again, dismal display veterans face when appealing the VA's decision on disability claims. And this new program was mandated by a public law, which is public law 115-55, and is titled the Veterans Appeal Improvement and Modernization Act of 2017. Woo, that's a lot. That's a lot. You know what I mean? But what does that mean to you? It means that the new law creates three different ways for you to appeal the VA's decision on your disability claim. Number one is called a supplemental claim lane. This is done by submitting new evidence to the same office that you originally, uh, uh, the new office that the, um, originally denied, denied your claim, and then it will be reexamined and everything will then go towards a new decision. That's number one. That's called a supplemental claim lane. Number two, a higher level review. If you've already given the VA all of the evidence you have, but believe it made a mistake, made a mistake, or missed something, you can request a higher level review that may or may not be at the same office that originally denied your claim. So that's number two, a higher level uh, review. And number three is entitled an appeal to the Board of Veteran Appeals. And this basically is the same option as you currently have. However, with the exception that, that you can now choose between three other options, that one being a direct review. Secondly, additional evidence submission. And third, a choice of hearing. So, this goes into effect, veterans, 19 February. So if you have something that has been denied, get ready. Get ready for the RAP ramp program, which is the Rapid Appeals Modernization Program that will help you 
with your claim that was originally denied. And what Anthony just went through really clears it up for a lot of people because initially the information were if you accept it and you were denied, it was you didn't go through the three steps that he mentioned. But being able to go through that process uh, to me clears it up and it also sees seem as though it's a good opportunity to to go through it because you really don't lose your 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 claim and you you don't you're able to get more information provide more information and hopefully get it taken care of at a faster pace yeah i, I can tell you this that the uh you, as a veteran you got to stay on top of your benefits you can't expect the VA or anybody else to do what you need to do yourself. You need to stay on top of your benefits because military benefits are always changing, folks. It's changing all the time. So you got to keep up with everything from your pay to your health care to everything. Okay, so if you don't do it, who else is going to do it? You you really need to do it. Your pay, your health care, your doctor's appointment. Because if you are receiving benefits and you don't keep your appointment, that's, that's going to affect it. And if you are in line to see a doctor and, and you don't keep your appointment, that's going to kick you out of the system. you got to start over. See? So it's very important. See, Herman's already talking about kicking you to the curb. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you got to stay on top of it. And it's also important, and we always talk about this, is that you need to sign up for e-benefits and you also need to sign up for My Healthy Vet. These are no-brainers, folks. Too easy to be done. And if you don't have the computer skills, then have someone help you. Your wife, your niece, your uncle, your nephew, your grandkids, your friends, another veteran. You know, or even go down to the VA yourself and go down to the advocate's office and have them help you set this up. It's too easy. There's a my healthy vet office in every VA. Well, well, that is that's true, and as it, we are saying, it's too easy. But it's also a requirement. It's also if you're uh, not, as they say, if you're not plugged into the information highway, you're gonna be in trouble because that's where we're headed. If it's not submitted through one of those systems. Whether you do it or you have a, a service officer do it, that's the way, that's what's going to make it le legit. Yeah. So it's going to have to get in there some way. Yes. Yes. It has to get in there. We really, really need for you veterans to stay on top of it because only you can do it. We've talked on the show before how veterans receive their ratings, and Herman just mentioned it, don't go to your appointments. Herman and his organization has documented cases where veterans did not show up for appointments. And all of a sudden, one day, they received a letter saying, oh, by the way, Veteran X, your compensation is now changed from 100% to 10%. And it's even worse than that is you, on the day you're supposed to get a deposit and it's reduced, and they actually did notify you on the e-benefits. You didn't get the, the paper copy. But since you're not on e-benefits, I mean, you, you're you really surprised. Now, just imagine how long did it take you to get that particular rating? A year, two years, maybe longer? Now, all of a sudden, you're cut off. Nothing comes into your account. It's now reduced by 90%. Guess what? It's not a 30-day fix. Not at all. It's almost like starting over again. All over again. Because now you got to go through the process to prove why you still need that compensation. And it was caused by you because you didn't go to your appointments. Oh, I'm good. I don't need to go. Well, I can tell you, being 100% disabled, I miss no appointments. None, nada. If I got it, I'm going. Because I know I need the help. Well, and, and I know I, it. And also, we... we we mentioned service officers several times, and that that that's a decision you also has to make. Is you you really get uh, 
good results by having a service officer. And whether that service officer is, what organization that service officer is from is up to you. But you, most of us veterans, including myself, uh, you, you're not, you don't do this every day. So you're not an expert on it. But service officers are expert on it. For an example, on the RAMP program, uh, a good service officer will be all the stuff that Anthony just went through. They will be able to articulate that to you and explain what will happen if you do it, what will happen if you don't do it. And understand that these uh, veteran service organizations and veteran service officers are a third-party agency, so they are not employed by the VA. So they, they are your advocate. They're the ones that will help you. Well, let's give you a scenario. Soldier X, male or female, seen at the VA, and you have a copy. And you can request a copy of your exam that you just went through. Then you can hand carry it, fax it, email it to your veteran service officer who then will date stamp it and make sure that it gets into the regional office channels to make sure that it's being part of your packet moving towards your either uh, uh, your initial claim or uh, information, additional information to try and inc increase your claim. So, again, it's on you. Understand the rules of engagement. That's all we're telling you. And uh, another rule of uh, engagement by service officers is we, we, we need to put it on the table that if you go to uh, – Organizations like the DAV, uh, VFW, uh, where American Legion, they have service officers that, as Anthony said, are paid by that organization. Absolutely, they're not, they are not paid by the VA, and they own. They have uh, certain times that they would do your claim at no charge. But you also have uh, service officers that are agents that works for the VA, and those service officers can charge you a fee. And you can also you have attorneys and attorneys and accountants, uh, special people that will also do your claim for a fee. So you you need to know that. Yeah, you need to know it. Understand the rules of engagement. If you understand the rules of engagement, it's a little different in the military when we were running around, you know, getting ready for, uh, you know, SRP or, uh, uh, you know. Uh, unit status report or whatever, you understood the rules and you did what you needed to do. It's no different now that you're retired. Don't be a knucklehead and not follow through because now not only are you affecting yourself, but you're going to be affecting your family and, you know, <laughs> Uncle Sugar, Uncle Sam, whatever you want to call them, every 30 days if things are right, you look in your bank account and things should be there. So hopefully, you know, you're doing the right things, follow through, get all your files together, and do the right things for yourself and your family. So again, get involved with e-benefits and also enroll in My Healthy Vet to be informed. And also, since we've been talking about the claim process and the benefits, uh, the, the passport or the entry point is your DD-214. Absolutely. So uh, this is... There are several ways to obtain one if you have misplaced yours. Uh, and each state has a Department of Veteran Services. And in Georgia, it's the Georgia Department of Veteran Services. They have uh, quite a few offices throughout the state. And one of the ones in Atlanta is uh, at the, on MLK Drive. And the number is 404-656-5940. Again, 404-656-5940. And I, I think Mr. R uh, DeMario Rocco is still there. So he, he will be one of the people that's able to help you. And if you're not able to get it through your state or uh, Department of Veterans Services, then you need to go to the National Personnel Services Records. Uh, and that number is... 314-801-0800. And notice that is not an 800 number. It's 
800-242-0800. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to me because we run into veterans all the time who indicate that they don't have a copy of the DD Form 214. We've also run into a situation where uh, a veteran passes on and the family didn't even know what a DD Form 214 was all about. Now, why is that form important? Well, let's say that that, that veteran passes on and you take the veteran's remains are going to a mortuary. The first thing they're going to ask you, is he a veteran? And then secondly, do you have a copy of that DD Form 214? That's very, very important because it will assist you as a family in getting things done for his final or her final rights. So that DD Form 214 is important. Again, it's also very helpful in looking for a job or going to school or trying to get a home. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that every veteran has. Every veteran is given a copy when he or she retires. And you're told at that time, keep up with this document. Herman knows, he laughs at me all the time, but that's okay. <laughs> I have a copy of it on my phone. Uh, and actually, it's becoming the norm because, he, as he say, I, I, I have a veteran organization, Veteran Helping Veterans, and uh, we, we were getting ready to do some information uh, because the VA has a Vietnam Veteran Memorial uh, presentation coming up. And I need to verify that the guys were Vietnam vets. Yes. And several of them just popped the phone up and showed it to me. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, the visually impaired veteran Aiken, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I got to do what I got to do. And um, I try to do everything that the, the VA has trained me to do and utilizing the the uh, instruments or the, the tools that they've given me under the CATS program, what's called Computer Access Training Program, and just to utilize my iPhone to help me in, in many scenarios. I don't see that well, even though you may, you know, looking at me on, on, on Facebook Live, yes, I have on eyeglasses and all that, but the vision is not that clear. But guess what? I've adjusted. I've gone through the training, and I know what I need to do based on my training. It's no different than in the military. You train. Well, that's you train to become effective. And I got to applaud the VA for helping me to become effective and I also have to salute my queen of 35, going on 36 years, Brenda, who has just been my major support and helping me to adjust to my new normal. Well, so do what you got to do. You do. And one thing is important uh, is to be technology savvy because if uh, I see the guys, you know, they're, they're those of us that have all levels of technology. I have a technology background, but I've gotten lazy over the years, so I'm not as good at, as I used to be. But there are people in my organization. I mean, they they have their iPhones, their iPads, and um, they they're pretty much paperless, and that's that's impressive. Yeah, it's impressive. But Herman, I want you to hold us up and see if they can be seen on the on the screen. It's a summary of VA benefits. I hope you'll be able to see that because that summary of VA benefits that we were talking about a few minutes ago really gives you a snapshot of everything you need to know in regards to benefits. Folks, it's available. It's free. It's free. Herman, here's another one. The other one is called a health care. What is it called, Herman? Health care benefits overview. Yes. And, uh, it's this one we're looking at is 218 edition. Right. I'm sure the 219 edition is is out. And this is what it looked like. You can pick it up at the VA. And also, uh, most of these can be picked up at the at the Georgia Department of Veterans Service Office or the satellite office, like at uh, Fort McPherson, uh, in those offices. Most of most of, uh, will have this material. Now, if you can't go. Uh, you're limited, for instance, I don't drive, so I, I need to use Lyft or Uber or my family members or friends to get me around. But if you can't go to pick these up physically, go online to va.gov. Exactly. va.gov. Educate yourself. If you can't see it all or do it all, have someone help you. It's just loaded with information. Do it. Now, understand, you, you might be frustrated, 
That's the way it is. That system is still somewhat antiquated as far as claims, benefits, compensations, the whole nine yards. But if you don't start, it's going to even be longer. And while we're talking about information, also the Georgia Department of Veterans Services officers have booklets similar to this that give you all of the benefits of being a veteran in Georgia. And they are, I mean, there are quite a few of them that's in that uh, booklet. Herman, can you give our listeners those numbers? You can see it pretty well and in regards to how they can get help. Can you, can you do that? Yeah, no problem. Uh, this, this is uh, VA benefits, and there are several ways to get health in a, and there are several different types. We'll start with health care. Uh, if you uh, want to go online, it's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.va.gov. Uh, the telephone number is 877-222-8387. Again, 877-222-8387. And uh, as we said, there are quite a few departments at the VA. That's for health care. And this one is for benefits if you're dealing with disability benefits or other type benefits. And that number is one that some of us know by heart. 1-800-827-1000. Herman and I know that number quite well because we're calling it all the time. Again, it's 1-800-827-1000. And while I'm there, if you're not in the agent or in database, dial that same number and tell the operator you want to register for the agent or database. If now, you, this is if you're a Vietnam veteran and you were exposed to Agent Orange, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And the hearing impaired number is 1-800-829-4833. Uh, 1-800-829-4833. Good information. Again, you're listening to Anthony C. Aiken and Herman Anderson on WCEG Talk Radio Network, uh, your worldwide community and empowerment group. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and please give us a call. You can call in or Skype us on 678-619-1402. And you can follow us on Instagram also, and that would be uh, at Instagram at WCEG underscore talk underscore radio. So there are all kinds of ways that you can get to us. You can see us on Facebook Live. I'm constantly getting calls and texts and emails and saying that we, we saw you guys on Facebook Live and we appreciate everything that you're telling us. Uh, information is great. You know, people always say about information. Information is good if you act on it. If you don't act on it, information doesn't mean anything. So our goal every week is to provide you up-to-date factual information so you can be informed and you can do the right thing for your family and yourself. Because we're committed here at the WCEG Network to provide you that information to move forward. And uh, just one other piece of information on Agent Orange, it's... Uh Vietnam, but it's also uh, if you were in that area in Thailand, uh, 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 Philippines, and you were exposed to Agent Orange by working on an aircraft or doing anything of that nature, that's that's a possibility also. Well, and locally, if you're in Atlanta, the number to call is four four three two one six one one one. And ask for extension 2181. Well, Herman, that's really important because there was just a landmark ruling this month, uh, January, dealing with veterans in the Navy, uh, from, uh, that served in the Navy, and veterans that um, were on the uh, riverways in Vietnam. They were called brown water and blue water. Those veterans serving in the Navy and those veterans that were on these um, 
little ships uh, with the army going through the waterways in Vietnam, they're also now eligible for benefits and compensations as a result of being exposed to Agent Orange. There was a landmark decision where it was 9-2 to two in the court system for it because even though the Navy folks didn't have boots on the ground, when the Agent Orange was sprayed, that herbicide that was used to kill foliage so we can see the enemy better, that herbicide got into the atmosphere and it moved about. So even though you were on a ship, you were exposed. Well, it also on a ship or on the planes. It also got into the the fiber, the fixture of those, those events. Correct. Those uh, instruments. Yes. Yeah, so those individuals that were logisticians, the box kickers, as we used to call them, in the, in the warehouses and the storerooms, that were storing the herbicide, they were also exposed. So just because you didn't have boots on the ground and the boonies that they said fighting against the 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 enemy you were still exposed, so that's why it is so important to go to the Agent Orange Registry Clinic at the VA, and it's a free examination. This doesn't cost you a dime. Please go. Get yourself examined and checked. There are 15 or more documented illnesses now that is not even a question anymore. If you serve between, you know, a certain period of time in Vietnam, I think it's 1962 to 1975 is the date, that, that time sounds frame. sounds good, yeah. You know, so if you served in Vietnam during that time, either in the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, the Marines, Coast Guard, whatever, please go get yourself checked out, get yourself in the Agent Orange database for possibly getting compensation because it's a 100% deal now. There's no fighting on this anymore. So if you had prostate cancer or some of the other things associated with it, get it done. Don't be a knucklehead. Well, it's too easy. It, it is, but there's always an asterisk by it. There are Vietnam veterans that has been in Vietnam, and they, and, and they had to go back and make sure they, they had the DD Form 214 in the orders because... Uh, when they filed a claim, the VA told them they, they had no record of them being in Vietnam. And I've had that happen in my organization. And once the person pulled out that DD Form 214 because it's on there, and if you a person that keep a, a copy of your orders, it's on there also. But just keep in mind, you it, uh, it should flow through easily, but you are going to have to always prove it. I know of several veterans good friends of mine that served in Vietnam uh, that are receiving compensations as a result of being exposed to Agent Orange. All of these men had prostate cancer. Every last one. Some were seen at the old Walter Reed and now the new Walter Reed in Bethesda. But we have a VA here in Atlanta. We got one in Augusta. We got them in all over the United States. Everywhere. All it takes for you to do is to go down to that Agent Orange Registry Clinic and be seen. Well, that's true. And I have uh, the latest newsletter and the numbers. This was as of April of 2018. That was 690,302 exams, uh, follow-up exams. That was uh, 81,926 for a total of 772 thousand two hundred and twenty eight and that does not cover the people that have not even got in the register. Not even in the register. And please, please get it out of your mind that if you go to receive claims or benefits that you're gonna be taking claims or benefits from another veteran. Please stop yeah. that. <laughs> that is so wrong. As a guy stay on the street corner, that's jacked up thinking. Yeah. You served with dignity, honor, and you received an honorable discharge. You are obligated. Or, I mean, it's an obligation to you. It is. I'm going to have to find my 10 reasons why people yeah, don't file claims. Because I tell you what, I haven't had a drum roll in a while. <laughs> you know, but, but, but we got so many veterans that are passing on, dying, that never even tried the claims process. We also have veterans 
that have passed on and died whose claims were never react worked on because of incompetence in, in the VA staffing. Herman and I spoke about this many times. Veteran files were received and put in boxes. Boxes were found in closets, found in files, never worked on. Again, it is up to you to stay on top of what you are trying to get accomplished. Well, well, we we have we talked about we talk about that all the time. The VA culture, being responsible and accountable. But I mean, even here in Newnham, Georgia, I mean, we've had uh, documentation of boxes of claims being received and just put in boxes. In it, uh, there was a big uh, documentation of. A claims five years old out in California never been open. That infuriates me. That just infuriates me that individuals who work for you, remember now, they work for you. That's why they applied to get the job and they're working in the VA. They work for you. And it infuriates me that an individual will do something like that to take your file and put it away. Yes, I understand there are shortages, there are cutbacks to whole nine yards. However, However, it is their job. It is not their job to put your file in a drawer, a closet, and a box to put it away. That's not right. And uh, we'll we'll give out all the information we can today. And also, if you are not able to go to here in Atlanta to go out on Claremont to the main building, there's also a location uh, where. The old McPherson location, which is on Cleveland Avenue, building 300, uh, you still call the same numbers, 404-321-6111. But you can also start your claim process at that location. Start your claim process. Work very closely with your veteran service organization and veteran service officer. Document with, with you know, your, your file with... with um, providing your VSO with information that you receive from your uh, primary care physician or your primary care team and making sure that it's date stamped and move forward and stay on top of it. Be diligent. Do your due diligence in making sure that you're doing the right things because I guarantee you, you just represent a last four. They see many, 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 many files. And what is the first thing they say to you? What's your last four? <laughs> that's this. That's what you represent. And they, you know, that's not disrespectful. That's all they can deal with. Because they're dealing with something every day. So what is it? The, the, the squeaky wheel gets the oil or however it's stated. If you oil that wheel, you might get something done. But call. I don't care how many times you call. Continue to call and follow up. Follow up. Do what you need to do. Understand the rules of engagement. Because we're going to give it to you here on WCEG Talk Radio Network and Veterans Today Talk Radio. You're going to get that information. And that's like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and call it and join the conversation. It's 678-619-1402. Herman, I know we don't do shout-outs. That's that's shameless, right? <laughs> Go but, ahead. But I got to give a shout out to a good old Army buddy of mine <clears throat> who's been laid up for the last two, almost three weeks. And that's Lieutenant Colonel Retired Thomas Murphy down in Augusta, Georgia. Thomas, if you're looking at us on Facebook, get well, buddy. Uh, do what you got to do, man. And uh, just know that your friends, uh, Stanley Waterhead and all of us are, are, are praying for you. And uh, Ken Dodd and all the others that have served with you, uh, we just want to let you know that we're thinking about you, my friend. And, and um, I know your Queen Claudia is there with you, uh, taking care of you the best she can. But just, just know that we're thinking about you and get well, buddy. Well, that is good. And uh, we are like I, I mentioned from time to time. We are of the age, a lot of us, that uh, Vietnam era veterans, we are senior citizen or whatever you want to call us. So we have to do bet, do a better job of taking care of ourselves health-wise and uh, diet-wise, exercise-wise. We, we, we just need to take care of ourselves. Taking care of ourselves, 
trying to get some rest, eating well, exercising. You know, we got phones now. We got Fitbits that you could put a Fitbit on your wrist or your iPhone, Android, whatever, in your pocket and walk. I try to do as much walking as possible, even at home. I'm trying to average between five to 10,000 steps a day. That's what I try to do. In addition to that, I'm trying to do at least 100 to 150 sit-ups a day and push-ups, eating well, stretching. You know, for us old folks, stretching is important. You start to shrink. You get shorter. <laughs> so, you know, those muscles are starting to contract, making you short. Yeah, I used to be a strapping 6'3". Well, how come you're 5'9 now? <laughs> because those rubber band muscles are pulling back. So every time you're sitting down there being a couch potato, get off of that couch, stretch, stretch, stretch with your queen, stretch with your wife, make it a, make it a team. And a, another issue is that's important that we talk about here uh, a lot is mental health. Mental uh, health. Woo! Yeah. And uh, no, mental health, it, the, the key word everybody uses is PTSD, but it's, it's more than that. Mental health issues could be PTSD uh, related, but it, it also could be other issues. But there is a, a, a newsletter that comes out every month from uh, the VA and it's, uh, it's National Center for, for PTSD. And you just go to PTSD.com and, and sign up and you can receive that newsletter. And it tells you about a common reaction to PTSD, educate yourself about PTSD, encourage treatment. You know, if you uh, have a family member or uh, you know of someone that you uh, think might be dealing with health is mental health issue, encourage treatment and encourage them to uh, go see a doctor. You know, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, we can tell you about it. We've had many, many guests on our show. We even even had one of our show hosts who's a sufferer of PTSD. As a matter of fact, he said sometimes when he goes into a shopping center, um, he's he's nervous because if a car backfires or something like that, he's he, he goes into a different zone. We've also had our good friend Horace Barnett, uh, U.S. Uh, Marine Corps, who now has a PTSD dog. But you have to go through it to get to it. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. You serve with dignity, honor, integrity, and the whole nine yards. It just happens to be an effect of your service. And as a result of that, you're, you're obligated to be served by the VA because you served. So there are all kinds of uh, v, uh, PTSD support groups. We've, we've had Morocco Coleman on, who talked about, you know, his days coming out of Vietnam where he'd gotten down to 87 pounds, stayed in the VA for, for months, suffering from PTSD and several other symptoms. And now he's one of the biggest advocates we have out there doing what he does to help veterans. So again, it's up to you, veteran, male or female, that served with dignity and honor in the defense of our nation to be served. If you have, think you have PTSD disorder, go get yourself checked out. If you've been exposed to Agent Orange, go and get yourself in the Agent Orange registry. Mental health, if you're having some issues, go see someone. In I mean, and that leads to uh, suicide prevention. Yes. The, uh, the rate of suicide is over 20 per month, and it, it's not really decreasing at any noticeable rate. And uh, I know the VA uh, lately has been putting a lot more emphasis on uh, preventing suicide, treat, putting out treatment for suicide prevention. But it's still a major issue. You know, we just recently had a story about a month ago of a U.S. Army, a U.S. Marine Corps colonel that went to the VA in his uniform, fully dressed uniform, sitting in his car with his medical records and committed suicide 
at the VA. Mental health, PTSD, whatever his issues were, he took his life. I don't know if it's because he hadn't been seen, frustrated from not being seen, or just total frustration with the VA system. But here is a man that served with dignity and reached the rank of full colonel the United States Marine Corps that goes to a VA facility in a parking lot in full uniform and commits suicide. If that's not a light to turn on, you tell me. Evidently, he was reaching out for help and wasn't getting it. Do what you have to do, folks. Get the help that you need. Have someone help you if you can't get to a facility. And family members and friends and all those, if you see a veteran that's struggling, a true friend will try and get that person some help. He's not crazy. He has issues as a result of his service. Same thing with a female. She has issues. Yes. And, so and, help him. It, and that's, that's a, a issue that a lot of veterans of not the Vietnam era veteran, but the younger veterans are actually uh, the female veterans of uh, the uh, other area of Afghanistan, and uh, uh, they are actually uh, making that known to the uh, VA and to the military that uh, female female veterans of that era has uh, their own unique. Uh, Issues that need to be dealt with, Absolutely. and there are not uh, facilities or uh, uh, treatment in place to deal with those ve those female veterans. Right, and and we know that the, the VA has limitations in regards to uh, the female veteran. Yes, they have what they call a woman's clinic, but that's limited in what they they're, they're doing. In most cases, a lot of females have to find outside services to take care of their needs. But when they do go to the VA, to the women's health clinic or whatever, serve them right. Help them. Because females, they really have some issues that are different than ours as a male. Well, well that, that is true. And you, you, you mentioned outside services in that uh, the choice program is still available, but it's not really. Does, the VA don't really seem to be making people are aware of the opportunity. Actually, it's kind of dropped off the power curve. Yeah, it has. You know, it, it came out around 2015 under President Obama's era, and uh, a lot of lot of problems with that thing when it started out. Mileage requirements, distance requirements, and now we're finding out that healthcare providers are not even wanting to see someone because of pay issues, not being paid on time, or not being paid at all. So now you have another compounded situation of delays in the VA, and the VA said, it, look, I think it's a 30-day deal. If you can't be seen within 30 days, then you have the authority to go outside. But then finding the right healthcare provider outside has now been a challenge, a challenge. So, you know, we have a system that needs a complete overhaul. We, we, we do, and because you know, when you find one outside, there's a process you have to go through to get the VA to approve it. And that was red tape that was frustrating people also. Again, you're listening to WCEG Talk Radio on the WCEG Talk uh, Radio Network, Veterans Today Talk Work, uh, the Veterans Today Talk Radio, and this is Anthony C. Aiken and Herman Anderson. And folks, we just enjoy what we do, providing you information. We do, and uh, a lot has going on has been going on in. Uh, and we want to uh, keep up as much as we can with veteran issues. And uh, as as you you know, uh, it's always a veteran issues with what's going on in in Washington and at the state level. Uh, there's a possibility that the the government may be shut down again in 15 days. Yeah. So uh, we ask you to, I mean, you as someone. Legislation issues and uh, dealing with your congressman and your representative at both the national and state level is important to let them know 
how you feel because uh, I read an article this week that Senator Eisenstein had some influence on the work stoppage, uh, the shutdown coming to an end because he he came across the aisle and voted with the Democrats to to do it, and he also did more than that. He he spoke to some other uh, uh, senators uh, about uh, how he felt about representing veterans. You know, he was involved with um, uh, the, Su- the Clay Suicide Prevention Act. And, you know, recently I was made aware of articles in uh, the VFW magazine that I receive often. And since we were talking about suicide, there's an upfront issue of current veteran concerns. And this particular magazine talks about veterans are 50% more likely to commit suicide than their civilian counterparts. That is scary. It really is. The suicide rate of young veterans has significantly increased since 2005. And then the VA now has data that shows that veterans are more likely to commit suicide than their civilian counterparts. That's a significant statement. And it shows you why we need to have suicide prevention, why we need to be cognizant of VA veterans that are around you that could be seen at the VA for help. This is not going away. We have veterans that are younger now that's going to be in the VA system for a long time. Since Desert Storm, Desert Shield, 1990, 1991 time frame, we've seen an increase in the number of veterans being seen at the VA. But since 2005, we've seen a drastic increase in veterans committing suicide. So, again, this is real. This is not fact, false news. These are, these are real figures. Real figures that you need to be aware of. And what's, uh, uh, what's also important about what you said is we have veterans that's going to be in the system a longer time and requiring high level of care. And that translates into budget numbers that we our uh, people in Washington need to make sure that the VA is funding it. Man. Say that again. <laughs> Make sure the VA is what? Funded. Funded. Yeah. They have money to take care of the veterans. They have money to pay our benefits and, and all of that. You know, if those things aren't done, you have this decreased staff, decreased services, increase the number of veterans that require those services, then you may start seeing an increase in what we not like to report on suicide. That is true. End up and like this this U.S. Marine Corps colonel in full uniform with his medical records and is sitting on top of his medical records in the VA parking lot that takes himself out. And you know, all of this is like a snowball effect. And, and another issue is uh, that we can't seem to get our arms around uh, a homeless veterans. No, you. We 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 are not able to solve that issue, and you have homeless veterans, and you also, when you're homeless, you have a lot of veterans that actually uh, are hungry. So dealing with food pantries, you're dealing with homeless veterans, and that's no you. You have to solve some of the other issues uh, to get the veterans off the street. Yes. Veterans off the street. Homelessness, no veteran should be homeless. And you know, right now, what's happening in Atlanta this weekend, Herman? The Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. So as I understand it, a lot of the homeless people have been moved away from downtown Atlanta. I don't know where they're going or where they're being put, but it's it's been brutally cold. Brutally cold. (laughs) 
So I don't know what's happening out there, but look, we, we are sending a shout out to veterans out there. If you know someone that needs help, please try, try and help them. It's not about the big game as they talk about. I couldn't care less about that game. What I do care about is veterans. Because we're looking at 110 men, maybe 120, and the ancillary staff around them, let's say it's 300 people, where billions of dollars are being spent on recreation, a game. Now, what about those kind of monies being correlated to the VA system to help people? Get, getting uh, <clears throat> veterans off the street. Help them out. NFL, listen up. <laughs> Put out a veterans fund. Help some veterans. Get them off the street. You're making a lot of money. But well, that's it. Since you since you brought that up, <laughs> um, another issue that has been pointed out is uh, Kevin Kaepernick. He's he hadn't played in two years. Colin Kaepernick, no, and, and, he's taking and, his job away, and that was because he brought up a social issue. It wasn't an issue about the flag. No, it was not an issue no. about veterans. It was about social issue, about homeless veterans, and also about the way uh, minority people are being treated by uh, by law enforcement is really it was those issues that he wanted to bring to light, and somehow got misconstrued, and it was about the flag. Well, for those individuals that consider themselves privileged, and by that I mean that they can go out and not be afraid of being stopped by someone in the law enforcement, you may not even understand and have a clue. But for those that are in that category of not being privileged, deal with it every day. The possibility of being stopped, harassed, beaten up, shot, taken to jail unjustly. The NFL has an obligation, an opportunity to excel by setting up a fund that can help veterans. You're making billions of dollars. There are only 30-plus teams in the NFL, 30. But your, your gross product numbers are staggering, staggering. So why don't make a social stance? Take a social, social stance and stand up and, and, and be accountable to those. You can do it. Become an advocate. Because our borders are free because people are serving for those games to be played. You know, you have this show on national TV where the entire football field is covered with soldiers unrolling a flag to play the national anthem. Yeah. You, you know what? The military is paying you for that, NFL. <laughs> That is true, and that's what some people don't know. The, the, the NFL, <laughs> you know, they're getting paid. Uh, yeah. So why not flip that around and help? I mean, the average attendance is 60,000 people. Multiply that by a, a $50 ticket. That's not even parking. That's not even, you know, the, the, the um, restaurant, uh, the, the venues there. Come on, NFL. <laughs> Help out. It's not about the big game where in 1963 a ticket probably was $12 in L.A. I watched that game. I was a young kid. I was 8 years old. No, 13 years old when I watched that game between the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs of the old AFL in the L.A. Coliseum. $12. Now a ticket, as I understand it, is in the range of 5 thousand dollars for a game and there's no residual effect other than having an NFL fan day or, or NFL um, religious sh uh, showdown or wh whatever they want to call it. I don't know. I haven't gotten involved. So let's let's take a break and uh, a couple of your sayings are some, some gave some, some gave all all gave some, you know. They and, gave it all. And freedom is not free. Freedom is not free. We'll be back, folks. Take a minute.